Here is our text for today. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be lifted up above the hills and all the nations shall flow to it. And many peoples shall come and say. Come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord. Come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord. Come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord. Come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord. Come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord. Come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord. Come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord. Come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord. Come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord. Come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord. that he may teach us his ways, and that we should walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and shall decide disputes for many peoples. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Isaiah prophesies a future day where the mountain of the Lord is lifted up. Now in the Old Testament world where God's people were living, mountains were important because mountains were where God's lived. If you wanted to go worship a god, even a false god, you needed to go to a high place. You know, in the time of the Greeks, where was it that Zeus lived? Mount Olympus, right? And so for God to say that his mountain is going to be lifted up, it means that his will be raised up higher than any other false god's mountain. Now, God's mountain was Mount Zion. That's the mountain where Jerusalem was built, and that's where his temple was, and God dwelt among his people. But did you know that Jerusalem and Mount Zion is not the highest mountain? It's not even the highest mountain in the area. Mount Olive, which is right next to it, is even just a little bit higher. But for God's mountain to be raised up even higher than all other mountains means that God will prove that he is the one true God and he is the greatest out of every other false god there is. The people... The people of God back in Isaiah's time lived in a world where it really wasn't that important if you went to Jerusalem or not. It seemed like, you know, it really didn't matter if you were to worship God or maybe you could worship one of the Baals or or one of the other false gods. And why go all the way to Jerusalem when there were the local high places and local mountains to worship? And besides... Who's to say if one mountain is really better than another? It's not hard to see the comparison today, is it? Where it doesn't seem like God is truly raised above everything else in our world. Where it doesn't seem like it's that important whether you worship God or whether you worship or just not worship anything at all, right? But Isaiah prophesies a day when God's mountain will be raised above all others, and thus prove that God is the one true God, and we should worship him alone. The second part of Isaiah's prophecy is that all nations will gather to the mountain of God on that day when it is raised up. And believe me, all nations were trying to get to Jerusalem in Isaiah's day, but they were trying to get to Jerusalem to destroy it. All nations wanted to come together, attack Jerusalem, and tear it down. But Isaiah's vision is much different. It's that 
all of the nations would come and learn from God. All the nations, all the peoples and, and cultures, all of them that were fighting amongst each other, all of the divisions would be gathered to God in unity. They would flow up hill. Isaiah says they'll flow like water uphill against how water normally flows. And God would unite all nations. In our world where people are are torn apart, are ripped apart, can you imagine what that would be like? For everyone, regardless of their culture, of their, their social class or economic class, would be united to God, all to learn from him. And what is the result when God's mountain is lifted up, when all nations gather to God, well, then there will be justice and perfect peace. Why justice? Well, because if there's not justice, then nothing we do here really matters. If there's no final judgment, there's no reason to do good or to do bad. And if there's no good, wise, and all-knowing judge, then there's really no hope to definitively say what is right or wrong. We're all just left to our opinions and peace. Isaiah promises a peace where there are no more weapons of war. And Isaiah 2-4 is a very familiar verse. In fact, if you were to go to the United Nations building in New York City, right across from the, the uh, headquarters of the United Nations is engraved on the wall Isaiah 2-4. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. And you no... Know, the, the thing about Isaiah is that he doesn't promise an organization, that there's no hope for humans to get together amongst themselves and, and force everyone to, to destroy all guns and bombs and missiles, that even if you were to make enough laws to make war illegal, to make owning weapons illegal, you would not be able to get rid of the mindset of war. You would not be able to change people's hearts to fight to be inclined to violence. But Isaiah doesn't promise a policy or a social movement or an organization. Isaiah promises a savior. Can you imagine that world of peace where you don't have to put locks on your door or security cameras on your buildings? You don't need to own a weapon, not even for self-defense. It's a world where where kids don't have to practice for lockdowns. And this Savior would step into a world filled with violence and injustice. A world where nations are torn apart, families and countries are torn apart by disagreements. And a world where it doesn't seem like it really matters if you worship God or not. This Savior would be born in a manger and would grow up, but he wouldn't beat weapons into farming tools, but those very weapons of war would be beaten into himself. As Jesus was lifted up on the cross, where was it that he died? Just outside the gates, on top of God's mountain. That as in Jesus' death, God lifted up Jesus, and thus raised up his mountain above all the others. That God, Isaiah's vision comes to us and finds its completion in Jesus as he is lifted up. God has raised his mountain up above all the others, and in Jesus' resurrection, God begins his reign over all creation. That it's only under the cross that all nations have a hope to unite in peace and justice. That it's only in Jesus' death and resurrection that God has proved himself. That God has saved the world from living in a mess of violence and destruction. And it's this Savior who would come and be born on Christmas Eve, on Christmas Day, that would save the world from its sin. And so Isaiah says, come, O house of Jacob, come all you God's people. Come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Let us gather to God's presence. It's not 
just in Jerusalem anymore. Jesus says that where two or three are gathered in his name, there I am with him also. Let us gather to God's presence and learn from him. And what does God teach? He teaches how to walk in his ways, and it's really quite simple. It can be summed up that, that, all, he, that all God teaches is to love God with your whole heart and love your neighbor as yourself. That's what it means to walk in the light of the Lord. And as we walk in the light of the Lord, Jesus' light shines on our path. That lights do two things. They reveal and they guide. That the light of the Lord reveals our way through the dark paths of our lives. And lights reveal, but that can be kind of a scary thing. I've got a question for you all. Has anyone ever been asked to clean their room? Or, or maybe you need to clean up your house and you shove it under the bed. You put it in the closet and close the door so that nobody can see it. I'll admit I'm guilty of that too. But God's light reveals all the messes of our lives. God's light shines into our lives and reveals everything that we wish to keep hidden. And that's a little terrifying. But remember that Isaiah promises a savior. Remember that Isaiah promises a Savior who reigns with scars in his hands. That through Jesus' death and resurrection, the light of the Lord shines on you and covers all of your sins. So the light of Je let us walk in the light of Jesus. The light of Jesus which shines all the way into the very corner of our world into our homes and into our neighborhoods and our workplaces and our schools. And come, let us walk in the light of the Lord, holding fast to Jesus who from now and until he comes again. And the peace of Christ which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the one true faith until life everlasting. Amen.